POC Network here with a Q&A. This time the question not coming from you, but one of the companies we've spoken to many times in the past. And that question is, what is headphone impedance? Now there's so many different headphones out on the market and they all come with their specs and they all claim this and they claim that, but there's one thing that a lot of people don't understand is what is the impedance number that each one has? Because it can vary. It can, it could be as different as 16 versus 20 something or 20 something versus 32, or it could be really massive. So let's, let's kind of take a look at one of these. Uh, we'll, we'll use this, this one for example. This is the Sennheiser Momentum headphones and the impedance rating on this is 18. And you can take a look at some of the other ones, like for example, the DT770 Pros, but they're 250 ohm version, 18 and 250 ohms. There's a big range between both of those two. In fact, all of these have different ratings to them. Uh, this is the Biodynamic Evento uh, wireless. I believe this one is actually the wireless one. These come with wired and wireless, but this, is, this one right here is the wireless. And uh, this one has a rating of 32 for their impedance. The Audio-Technica, I believe, is 45. <laughs> They're kind of all over the place, but if uh, my memory isn't failing me here, this is a 45. Uh, these are the Sennheiser, uh, this is actually an older pair, I think. I don't think this is one of the newer ones. Uh, this is the HD500 uh, Sennheiser. Uh, this one has an impedance rating of 32 as well, similar to the Aventos. I already mentioned the Sennheiser Momentums are 18. And then of course we have the Bose Quiet Comfort 35 wireless noise canceling headphones, which I honestly don't know what the impedance rating is. And apparently I'm not alone on that one. So you got 32, 45, 32, 18, 80, and big question mark over there. But you get the point. Uh, it ranges anywhere it's between like eight and 16. That's the lowest point all the way up to about like 600. And so what determines this is the voice coil. Uh, the voice coil is a, a wire that's wrapped around forming a coil inside of the driver. And the driver, typically, these are uh, dynamic uh, headphones. There's multiple multiple different ty types of headphones out there. You got planar, bone conduction, uh, uh, balanced armature, and so forth. But your average, uh, what you normally find on the shelf is dynamic. So that's what we're going to focus on this round. Uh, but the voice coil, in terms of the dynamic headphones, usually comprise, or, or is part of the driver, which is comprised of three different parts. You have the magnet the voice coil itself and the diaphragm. All together, this, this, um, all three parts in the driver, uh, they function to pretty much turn the analog signal that's being fed to the headphones into something that you can actually hear in your ears. And the voice coil is wrapped into the form of coil and it's, it, it's pretty much a wire, not pretty much, it is a wire. <laughs> and, but the thinner the wire is, the higher your impedance rating is gonna be. The thicker the wire is, the lower the impedance is gonna be. And thinner versus thick and all that, that might be a little confusing, but really what it comes down to is that the thinner the voice coil, the higher, you know, like I said, the higher the impedance is gonna get. It also means that uh, the more wraps you're gonna get, you know, there's less air between all the layers. And what this does is it, it, it forms a stronger electromagnetic field, really. And because of that, this requires a little bit more voltage to feed. It's, it's, it's a hungry little critter. And when you're using some devices, you know, that are typical, just basic media devices, you know, you're not going to get the same effect out of it and or maybe not much at all uh, compared to your average, more lower impedance headphones. And that's where the thicker wire comes into play. The, when the, the wire's thicker, it's less of a coil. It's much easier, uh, affordable for manufacturers to mass produce and get onto the market. So that's why most of your cheaper headphones are typically low impedance. Uh, somewhere between the range of like, 45 and 50 and below. 32 and below is pretty much your average uh, affordable headphone uh, model on the market. But with the, the lower impedance coil, uh, it's a lot easier to feed it because of that. It, it doesn't require much voltage to, to drive it, you know, so it can operate on an anorexic diet of something like a, a, you know, a basic little portable media player that's battery powered and uh, doesn't offer many uh, features to it. So, with the lower, that is what you're going to be aiming for. If, if, you, if you're looking for a pair of headphones that are or something you're going to be taking out on the road for a jog, you're taking it to the gym, you just want to plug it into your iPod, your smartphone, a tablet or something like that, uh, but also want to be able to plug it into a stereo system or anything else, a lower impedance model is probably what you're going to want to shoot for. Uh, typically 45, 50 and below, like I had mentioned. 
32 is pretty much the average. You can get a lot of really decent headphones with a 32 rating. And, uh, but then again, you can go even lower than that. Uh, again, the Sennheisers here, the Momentums, these are 18, they sound fantastic, you know, for what they are. Now, now if you're looking for something a little bit more intense, you want something that's, you know, it's gonna have more range to it, a much larger sound stage to it with richer bass, with strong detail and, and, and whatnot, you're, now you're starting to talk about, you know, getting into more of the mixing headphones, you know, it goes kind of kind of inches its way up for you know you kind of find djs and stuff you know that you know they're artists that are that are mixing with headphones that range between like 50 and let's say 80 then you go into more of a studio profile which is 80 to past 100 up to 250 and of course when you're going up into the 600 range you know or 250 600 range now you're starting to reach a point where something more is required of you. Uh, you're not going to be able to get the same volume out of it if you plug it into something like a media player, a small little portable device, a smartphone, a tablet. It's just not going to be powerful enough to drive something like that because it's going to it's going to want more juice. It's going it's, it's it has a much thicker diet to it uh, because that thin coil, like I said, that that tiny little coil that's in there, that's that's the thin wire that's wrapped really tightly with multiple different layers. It needs a lot of juice to really uh, get that umph you're looking for. So in that case, with the higher impedance headphones, you are going to get that larger range and, and that bigger sound stage and more bass and all that good stuff. You know, but it's also going to require something more to drive it. You're going to require instead of something like a, a portable media player, which you're probably going to get little to no volume out of it uh, if you plug it directly in there. You're going to use something, you know, starting with something simple with uh, a USB DAC. This is a Dragonfly USB Black Edition uh, DAC amplifier. It's a pretty nice device. You simply plug it into a USB port of your computer, and then it has a 3.5 millimeter jack on it. You plug your headphones into that, and this is gonna give you the amplification you need to be able to feed something uh, a little bit bigger than, you know, say, below 45, 50 ohms. The 80 ohm DT770s from Biodynamic we're great with this, but even with this, it sounds great, but it, it seems like you can really get more out of these headphones. So uh, Dragonfly actually makes a red version of their USB DAC, which gives you a little bit more voltage, and that makes a big difference for these. It is noticeable. And then of course, if you want more, and especially if you're going above 80 ohms, you're gonna want something bigger. An external USB, that's a DAC, or you can use a tube amplifier, uh, a nice tube amplifier. There's many different headphone amplifiers out there on the market that are specifically designed to drive headphones just like that. And they're gonna give you that bigger, that bigger range, that bigger sound stage that you're looking for, better than this even. This is, if you're, if you're just mobile and you're on a budget or something, this one costs like $99. The red one, I believe, is $199. And, but you have multiple different other models as well. One example is by Creative. Uh, you might know them for uh, sound cards and computers, uh, both internally and externally. They have an external USB DAC called the Sound Blaster X7, and that can feed headphones up to 600 ohms, and typically sounds pretty nice. Better than this, for sure. It's more expensive, though. Uh, you also have things like the Little Dot MK2, which is a little tube amplifier. Uh, it's pretty popular. Uh, I believe it falls under $200. Uh, that one can feed headphones up to 600 ohms. And then, of course, you got this. Again, this will work with the 80, and the red one will probably work past 80. They claim up to, I believe it was like 300 ohms. Uh, but I, I wouldn't go that far. I'd stay within the hundreds, anything past that. I'd go with something else like the Sound Blaster or the Little Dot, or if you actually have a really nice external tube amp or DAC to, uh, to pair with those headphones, then, you know, obviously that's going to be the winner. But those can get into whew, the upper hundreds, the, into the thousand range. Uh, we've seen um, external headphone amplifiers that cost anywhere between 1500 and five grand. So really it comes down to what your preference is. But that is the difference in impedance. That is what the impedance comes from. What, what determines the impedance, what drives it? You know, what, what are you gonna be looking for? What are you gonna be pairing your headphones with? If you have the 32s, the 80s, or the 250s, for example, of the Biodynamics. So the 32s would pair greatly with just your smartphone an iPod, a tablet. The 80s pair better with the Dragonfly, or preferably the red version of the Dragonfly that has a little bit more voltage. And of course, the 250 ohm version is probably gonna be best with the Creative Sound Blaster, external DAC, the Little Dot MK2, or, you know, if you really have a nice external amplifier sitting around, then, well, that. So there you have it, that's it. That is the difference in the impedance. 
and I, I hope that really helps better explain everything for you. So check us out online on our website where we have all sorts of tips, tricks, reviews, highlights, and everything else you can imagine. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to send them in. You never know when we might actually answer one and uh, publish it online just like this one. So again, as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.